Hey guys, Dimitris here. Welcome back to my channel where I show how to build digital solutions and automate your workflows. Now today's video is going to be like a follow up to the last video I made, which was um, the add custom domains to your Notion web pages. And I released this a few days ago and it actually already be became one of my most popular videos so far. You guys seem to really like this one. And uh, thank you so much for all your comments here. Your comments really help me create videos that you guys actually find useful, you know, instead of just making random videos. Um, and uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm actually going to be showing you how to create a full website using Notion, you know, and we're also going to be um, applying the methods that I talk about in this video in order to add custom domains to our pages. Um, and I'm also going to be answering some of the questions you guys had under this video, right? So. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is actually um, creating like a business website. You know, I think that's the um, that's a good example in order to show you all the different parts of a website, you know, or all the different types of pages, you know, and I think I'm going to be creating like a restaurant website. You know, I think that's a good example to show like different types of pages, like an about us page, a contact us page, a menu page, a blog page, you know, so we're going to cover all that now. In order to, for this video to make sense to you guys, you first of all need to watch this video. You need to follow all the instructions in this video in order to first of all set up a custom domain using um, Fruition and Cloudflare. You know, and once you have your custom domain, as you can see right here, I have everything set up, ready to go. Once you have that, then you're gonna be able to come back to this tutorial and see how you can use those methods in order to um, to create a full website. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new page, right? And I'm gonna name this, um, I mean, this is gonna be the home page, right? So this is gonna be the first page on the website. This is where my domain is gonna uh, direct to, right? However, on Notion, as you know, um, whatever you build, right, is what the user is actually going to see when you share the page, right? So I think instead of home, instead of writing home here, I'm actually going to write like a welcome message. So welcome to, and then I can have like the the restaurant's name. So I can have like, uh, let's think of a name, pizza addict. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then we can have a, let me make this full screen. So let's close the sidebar and then we can have like an emoji. I can have like a pizza icon and then I could also have a cover. I could also add a cover and I can use Unsplash, which is a copyright free image um, website, right? And I can search for like pizza or, or even better, we can search for restaurant. So this is like an imaginary restaurant. So we can have an image of the actual restaurant. Let's try this one. That looks good, you know, and you can reposition it, you can drag it up and down and so on. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then what we can do here on the home page is obviously have a menu, right? So this is what's gonna allow our users to um, go from one page to the other, right? So we can have a I like to add dividers on everything so we can have the menu in between these two divider lines. So each page, each item on the menu is obviously going to be a page, right? Because we want to open new pages. So I'm going to create a page and let's make this the about us. So should we make it capital about us like that? Uh, I don't like it. Let's do it like that. And then for the icon, we can have, uh, let's see, let's just go with this one. I tried to find better icons earlier, but I can't think of anything that will be suitable for the About Us page. Um, I like this one here. Okay, let's go with this one. I was going to use this one for the blog page, but whatever. Uh, and then cover. Um, uh, let's just leave it empty. Let's not waste time. This is not going to be like a design tutorial, you know, so I don't want to focus too much on like designing. Uh, so here I'm just going to put some random text, right? So this is where your text is going to go. And then you can have like images. So I could have an image and then this image, I can get it from us Unsplash. So I could have like a pizza or something. 
so this could be like a story of how the company started and then I can fix this here a little bit so it's like a paragraph perfect okay um, yeah so this is the about us page and then we can also have a contact us page so page contact us and then uh, we can have an icon I can have this one uh, and then here guys so on the contact us page uh, what you can do is actually have a form you know so you can have a form where your users are going to be able to submit uh, information and you're going to be able to receive that information either on your email uh, or on your uh, database which I'm going to show you right now so the service that I always like to use in order to embed forms on Notion is Airtable. This is by far the easiest and the best service you can have um, to embed forms on your website, right? So I'm gonna go here on my Airtable account, so airtable.com, this is a free service, right? So I can go ahead and create a new workspace and I can name this restaurant, I can name it My Pizza restaurant so this is going to be the workspace where all the different databases uh, that I created are going to go and I'm actually only going to need one database and I can call this um, uh, I can call this website right so this is going to be the database where all the information for my website is going to be stored in and then inside this database I can have different tables right so this is the the different fields that my form is gonna include. This is this is the fields that the, the user is gonna fill in when they submit data, right? So actually what we can do to make this more interesting is turn this into like a reservations form, right? So reservations or make reservation. So since, since this is a restaurant, we can allow the user to make a reservation, right? So here, I'm gonna define the fields that I want this form to have. So first of all, I can ask for the user's full name, the person's full name, not really users. Um, and then we can ask for their phone number in, in case we need to contact them. Phone number. Uh, let's search for the correct field type. So that's going to be uh, phone number. Save. And then here I want to have, let's change this to uh, let's see what else could we ask for maybe the number of persons right so uh, it's gonna be a number like that and I can make this an integer so it's just one value no decimal points um, save and then we can also have oh yeah the date and time right so date and then the date format, I'm gonna select local and then include time so they can also enter the time when they wanna visit. And I'm gonna call this date, uh, or I should say reservation date, right? Save. And you can add more stuff, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then what you want to do is go here. I'm actually going to change this to reservations. This is going to be the name of my table. And then I'm going to go to this little icon right here and create a form view, right? This is what's going to allow us to create a form. As you can see, the form is automatically created with all the fields that we added, right? And if you want to add more fields, you're just going to go to grid view. You know, you're going to add your new fields and then that's automatically going to appear right here on this sidebar and then you're going to be able to drag the fields on the form and add them wherever you want as you can see we can rearrange the fields customize the form in any way we like and then we can just instead of form there we can have um, reservation you know you can add description you know you can add help text you know for each part of your form fields here you know you can make them required you know, so the form is not submitted if these fields are not filled in, you know. And then the cool thing, so when, when the uh, person submits the form, you're going to get the data automatically 
right here. So you're gonna be able to see all your reservations nicely displayed on this table. But the cool thing is that Airtable also allows you to send this data to your email. So if I click on this, they're gonna email the data to my email, right? So that's really useful. And then here we can also have a thank you message. So this can be thank you for your reservation, right? So now, how do we add this to our Notion page? All we got to do is go to share. Uh, we then go to this shared view links. We click on this and here is our form. So we copy this URL like that. And then we just go here and paste it. Create embed, right? So that's going to embed the form on the page. And there we have it. I mean, it doesn't get easier than this, guys, honestly. <laughs> and you can use this method on any like website you want. It's not just for Notion. You know, this is for any website you create. Uh, this is by far my favorite way to add forms to websites because it also reduces spam, right? So uh, I noticed that when I have like HTML forms on my websites, uh, there is a, a, like a bot that would just submit information like they try just trying to contact you to pitch services and so on uh, and if you if you have normal HTML forms they they're really easy to um, detect and the bots are able to send messages but with these forms um, I noticed that because these are embedded forms it's much harder for the bots to actually submit random information so that also protects you from um, for bots. Uh, and let's go ahead and test it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a random name here, George, phone number, five, four, whatever. And then let's choose a date and then a time. Six o'clock, submit. Thank you for your reservation. And if we go back here to Airtable, as you can see, we have received the new entry. I can go ahead and delete these ones. We have received our new entry, and if we actually go on our Gmail as well, uh, refresh, there we go, right? There's all the information right there. So that's how you add forms. That's, so that's our uh, reservation page done. And now what we can do is actually take this page and drag it over here to the right-hand side. As you can see, you get a, a blue line which means that when I leave this, it's gonna create a new column, right? And this is gonna allow me to create like a, a nice horizontal menu like you get on most websites. Uh, it's up to you, I mean, you can do anything you like. Um, and then I'm gonna create a new page and this is gonna be the menu page, right? So it's good to have a menu on a restaurant website. So I'm gonna create a menu page here. And I was thinking of adding like a gallery, you know, so this is like a nice view and what we can have is like the different categories of the menu. So like appetizers, pasta, uh, pizzas, and so on. You know, so I could name this categories. And then I'm going to go here. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to name this appetizers. I hope that's spelled correctly. And then I'm going to add a cover, which is going to be an unsplash image once again appetizers let's see what we can find here so um, let's go with this one and now the cool thing guys is we can go here and go to properties and then card preview you can make this page cover and this is actually gonna add the the cover image to the icon right here which is really cool you know it makes it look so much better uh, and then we can have more so we can have pizzas cover uh, pizzas um, let's go with this one and now oh that looks nice pastas or pasta um, change cover pasta there we go. That looks good. Perfect. And now we can go inside these pages and create um, a different structure for the actual items, right? So for the actual menu items. And I mean, it's up to you, like you can add another gallery, 
you know. So we can have another gallery and here display all the different appetizers and so on. You know, and inside these you can have like descriptions and uh, prices and whatnot. You know, I could do one, you know, just to show you an example. So we can have like, uh, I don't know, like a salad, I don't know. Salad, and then we can have the description. You know, we can call this um, description, or you can come up with something more creative than that. And then we can have the uh, price, you know, or actually, no, we can just add the price. So this can be like eight dollars, whatever. Um, or actually what you can do to make this more interesting, you can actually add that as a property. So we can create a new price property here. And um, let's see, so that's gonna be a number. And it's not gonna be any type of number, we're actually gonna format it, format number, okay. Why am I not getting him? Hmm, that's weird. Um, let's try that again. Not here, here. So price format. Okay, it doesn't let me format. Let me open this as a full page format. Why? Oh my God. 40. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I can make this like six and then click on format. Form. Okay. So I need to add a number first and I can make this dollars, right? So now what this means is that on the actual, oh, let's go back to menu. I think it was appetizers, yeah. So now what I can do here, um, let's call this items or dishes. And then here, what I can do, first of all, I can have the cover, which is gonna be the, um, the image of the actual dish, right? So it could be a salad. Uh, let's have that. Um, and if you want, you can also have an actual image here. So like a an image that's a, that is not cropped, you know, so we can have the same exact image right here. So the, the customer can see the image right there. We can make it a little bit smaller. And then what we can do, let's go back here now. So appetizers, and then let's edit this gallery properties. And on the properties, first of all, we want to have the page cover like that. And then we can also add the price right there, right? So if you select price, that's going to add the price on the actual card of the gallery, right? So you could do that as well. And depending on your website, you know, there's so many things you can do here. Like you can have more properties. For example, if you have um, like a business website, like a, like a web development company, you know, you can have your services and then here you can have the price of the service, the, um, uh, the monthly retainer, you know, the setup fee, whatever you want, you know, so this is a really useful part here where you can have the, the different properties and then you can also select to view them on the actual card. So that looks nice. Um, let's see, what else can we do here that's interesting? Um, oh yeah, and then you can also have different views, you know, so you can have like a list view, but I guess that's not really ideal for a website, you know, to have different views. Um, so, I mean, you get the idea. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna focus too much on like the uh, building pages, you know, with Notion, because if you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with Notion, you're probably already using it. So you know how to build your pages and design them in the way you want. I'm just I'm just trying to give you some ideas of things you can do. Um, the most important part of this tutorial is actually creating the links and the the, the, the domain, you know, link do, doing that part, which we're going to focus on in a second. So now let's just add this there. And now the last page that I want to have, and this is an important one because um, this is going to have a lot of, oh my God, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's better. And then gallery 
here what you can do is add different posts right and then we can have different posts so this could be a post called our story and as I was saying the blog is going to be a tricky one because on a blog you're going to have many different posts right so when it comes to um, creating sub pages using fruition for different blog posts it's going to be a little bit more complicated so I'm going to show you what you can do um, and that's actually going to answer one of the questions here I think uh, Stratos had that question you know about a blog so I'm going to be answering that in a second uh, so here so here we're going to have like um, all the posts right so I'm going to create an example post here and here's where the content is going to go for the post so once again I'm going to have my random text right there and then we can have images and so on and we can add a cover so this could be a story image let's see what we can find well, let's just go with this one once again I'm gonna edit the gallery here so properties page cover there we go okay so now I created the whole website. I'm gonna make, put this there. So let's rearrange this a little bit. Space it out. Perfect. And then here on the home page, you can obviously have more stuff. So you can have some text. You can have um, uh, like images again. So we can have an image here uh, of the actual. Let's add a pizza right there it looks nice okay and then we can have some more text here and another cool thing that you usually find on these kind of websites is like coupon codes right so we can have like a pizza coupon code if you have any deals going on and stuff like that we can have this one for example so Let's see if we can access the image link. There we go. So that's an image link. And then we can just um, image embed link, right? So I'm going to embed the image from that link. There we have it. And then we can have like a, a header here with like coupons or uh, deals of the month or whatever. You know, so we can have that there. And now our website is pretty much ready. You know, we have all the basic pages that any informational website would have, uh, any local business website would have. You know, so now what I'm gonna do is show you guys how you can uh, create your, your custom domains, right? So um, as I mentioned at the beginning, you should already be at this stage right here where you have your uh, domain set up with Cloudflare, you know, and you have created the worker as I showed you on my previous video. Uh, so we're going to go to manage workers here and this is the worker I created. So I'm going to click on it and then I'm going go, to go to quick edit and this is the script. So now what we want to do is go to fruition to the step two part here and this is where we're going to be creating. Let me delete this. This is where we're going to be creating the, the whole structure so we can generate a script in order to paste in the worker. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, of course, like enter my domain here. And I purchased a new domain yesterday. It's going to be Dimitris Tutorials. Because I was tired of using that uh, <laughs> personal trainer domain. Uh, so Dimitris Tutorials XYZ. And then here is where we're going to paste in the home page URL, right? So this is going to be the main page. Now we're going to go to share, public access. Uh, I'm going to, not going to allow it to duplicate as a template. And then I'm going to click on copy page link and just paste it right there. So this is going to be the main page. And then we want to create pretty links for the sub pages, right? So this is going to act as a normal website, right? So we're going to add a sub page about, right? So when the, the person visits, uh, the domain slash about they're going to be taken to a page that I specify right here and obviously this is going to be the about us page right so I'm going to go to the about us page I'm going to go to share 
as you can see, it already has public access because I gave public access to the main page, right? So it already has public access. However, what I want to do is copy this specific page link. And then I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to create a new pretty link. And this is going to be a reservations page or reservation. Um, and this is where I need to paste the this reservation page link. So I'm going to go here. Form loads up perfectly. Okay, so share, copy page link. And let's paste it right here. And then I'm going to add another page, which is going to be our our menu page, share, copy page link, and then I'm just going to add menu, paste it right there. And then we're going to add another pretty link, which is going to be the blog. And this is going to be the main page of the blog. This is where all the posts are going to be displayed, right? Or you can have categories of posts and whatever. Um, so this is going to be blog and I'm going to paste that right there. So now I'm going to, the, the code is automatically generated as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the code and I'm going to go to my worker, select everything, delete it, and then paste in the new, okay, paste in the new code. And then if this thing goes away, I'm going to be able to click on save and deploy. So save and deploy. And now the the my website should be active. So now if I go to Dimitri's tutorials dot XYZ, let's hopefully this works. Ah, damn. So I think it's gonna take a little bit of time. I, I, I did this this morning and it gave me similar errors. And I think it takes a little bit of time to propagate. Because I've been getting like random errors like this one. Let's hope this works here. Nah. Um, I mean, this happened to me again. So I'm gonna, I might have to pause this video and give it some time to propagate, or maybe I'll try to click here. Ah, uh, it doesn't work. Um, I've done everything correctly, I know that, but sometimes it takes it. Let's try and, let's try and generate the script again. So we have all the pages here menu reservation about yeah and the domain is right image tutorials so yeah that's right so i'm going to try and copy this again let me try and reload one more time okay it doesn't work so i'm going to go ahead and once again paste everything there Okay, so I can't save and deploy because it's the exact same script. So this should work. I think it just takes a little bit of time. So let me try once again. No, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new private window. Usually it might be like a cache issue, you know, a cache issue with your browser. So let's try it here. Okay, it doesn't work. Um, let me go to the actual, let me try and type about, there we go. So you see, things are starting to happen right now. So let me go here, now it works, right? So it takes, a, I, don't, I don't know why it happens, maybe it's because I did this tutorial, I did this, uh, before I made this tutorial, I tried this a couple of times, you know, with different scripts. So usually, sometimes it might have issues like that, but now everything should work fine. You know, once you get it to load for the first time, try, like, if you get errors like this, try to visit different sub pages, you know, that you created instead of going directly to the homepage, try and visit different sub pages. And once you get it to load up once, it should work from that point on. Let, let me create another private window here and let's see. 
yeah, it loads fine. Let me try it on another browser. Come on. Ah, okay, let me go to a private window. There you go, right? So it also has to do with your browser cache settings, right? So um, what you can do is actually go to, um, just just go on Google and search for how to clear uh, browser cache, right? And this is gonna give you instructions on how to do it on your, um, on your specific browser, right? So once you do that, it should, load just fine you know or you can try and quitting your browser and then opening it up again and uh, trying trying to do it and it should eventually work so um so that's it that's a little troubleshooting session right there you know so that's useful because you might get error errors with it um and then now the next thing i want to talk about is i want to answer this question right here so I want to build a blog using this method. Do I have to edit the script every time I want to upload a new article? So what Stratus is asking right here is basically when you have your blog and you have different posts on your blog, um, let me go to the actual live website. So let me go back to, and let's hope this works. Come on. Ah, okay, let's go here. So blog, the reason it doesn't work is because I didn't clean the cache settings on this specific session right here. But if I go to blog here and I and I click on the a post and then open as a page, as you can see, we get the domain, but then we get this extension, which is, is similar to what you will get on a normal Notion page. So if I go to my, um, to my Notion right here, and if I click on this post, as you can see, we get the, the usual ugly Notion extension, you know? So, I mean, this is what you, you would no normally get on any type of website. Now, like usually you, you get um, like an ID for a specific post because um, uh, if you have a lot of posts, you're either gonna get an ID for a specific post or you're gonna get like a tag name, you know? So it's common. However, if you want to get rid of that and if you want to make it pretty, what you can do, let's go back to our fruition here. What you can do is create a new pretty link and you can name it blog slash, right? So this is going to be a sub page to the blog page and then add a tag name, uh, one, um, our story. You can add a tag name for your specific blog post, right? And then here you can enter the Notion URL for that specific page. So currently we're on the blog on the blog post right here and I can go to share, copy page link, and this is the link for this specific blog post. So then when I go here, I can enter it. And I mean, this, this doesn't make the workflow easier. You know, you would still have to generate a new script right here and you would still have to replace that script on your worker. You know, however, this is gonna allow you to have like a, a more pretty link for your blog post. So now if I go to my, let's close all these down. So now if I go to my, uh, let's open a new page. So Dimitris uh, Tutorials XYZ. There we go. So now if I go to my blog and I go to that specific post and I open it as a page, as you can see, we now get blog slash our story. So this is a link that you can share on social media, for example. It's a nice, pretty link. You know, you don't have to share the ugly Notion URL with all these numbers in it. You know, uh, this is an alternative. So it doesn't, you don't have to create like a new sub page. So you don't have to create like a sub page, which is like, our story, you know, because that doesn't really make much sense to have a bunch of different sub pages. It makes more sense to have like a blog slash post name, right? So that's something you can also do. But once again, it doesn't, it doesn't make the workflow any easier. You would still have to 
uh, generate the script every single time you know so it, it's up to you really what you want to do but it, it doesn't there is no alternative um, and then let's go ahead and see if we have any more questions here um, you're so cool all your tutorials are amazing fresh simple and straightforward thank you so much do you know how to protect your images if you use Notion as a gallery portfolio for artists, photographers, for instance? Okay, that's an interesting question. How to protect your images? Now, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by protect your images, but if you're a photographer, what I can assume is that you want to sell your images. You want to create like a website where you want to display your images and then later on sell them to to uh, people who want to purchase them um, a good way to do that is by basically uploading low quality images I think that's how everyone does it right uh, you would upload like a low quality version of your image with maybe a watermark you know so people cannot download the image because I mean there's no way to protect an image from anyone downloading it there's no way to do that anyone can just go to your uh, browser um, source code and they can just find right here the link of the image right there you know and then just just download it just save the image right so there's no way to protect the image once it's in the browser however the way that I recommend for photographers to protect their images if they want to sell them is by um, uploading low quality image of uh, low quality images low quality files of the the image and also using a watermark and then when you want to sell the image what you can do if you want me to give you an idea for that too what you can do is then have a link to a um, to an e-commerce platform where the person can purchase the image and download the high quality file for that image and if you want me to give you an example of a platform you can use, it can be Gumroad, right? So Gumroad allows you to set up an e-commerce store in order to sell files. So if you have an image that you want to sell, you can just upload it on Gumroad. It's actually free to get started. So it's free and they just take a small percentage. But once you start making more sales, you can actually opt in for the $10 plan, which is very, very cheap uh, for an e-commerce platform. And that's going to actually take away the 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 cut you know it's going to take away the commission you're only going to have to pay for the uh, standard payment gateway commission um, and then you can have your uh, your image files on Gumroad right and then you can just link them you can you can have a link to your product on Gumroad where they the person is going to be able to uh, buy that file you know that image file you know, so, so that's one way of doing it. Um, so yeah, I really hope that answers your question. I'm not really sure what you mean by protect your images. If you mean like protect your images so people can not download them, that's not going to be possible. There might be a solution, but I'm not aware. I, I'm not aware of any. You know, it's very hard to protect uh, files once they open in a browser. You know, once they open in a browser, anyone can just go to the source code and find the URL where you have that file uh, hosted, you know, so it's very, very hard to do. Uh, let's see, anything else? Mark, thanks Dimitri for the video. You're very welcome. Would also be great if you show how to make an entire website on Notion. Uh, this is basically what I did on this tutorial. Uh, so yeah, guys, this is it for this tutorial. I really hope I was able to go through everything uh, in a nice, simple way. Um, Feel free to let me know once again in the comments if you have any questions, you know, I can do more videos, you know, for specific website types, you know, if you want to see more features uh, on a Notion website, let me know and I might try and uh, create a, a tutorial to show you how you can achieve something, um, something that you want. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, like this video if you found it useful, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. And I'm going to see you on the next one.